Okay, so this is a follow-up video to my 5.1 trillion score there on World Boss. I'm kind of making this for myself and for everyone else that has this roster. Um, obviously, your score won't be as high if the heroes aren't as high, but the comp is very sound. So if you have these heroes, then you can get a very good score as you level them up naturally. As I said in my last video, I would never recommend amping heroes solely for the purpose of world boss okay negligible gains there however it is worth noting that you can get a very very good reward every week if you do some optimization so put your dps on manti gear pans is a terrible dps for world boss cc is your queen against protan but i use pans because that's what i have invested into um, these are my perks. This is the most important one. Okay. This is right here. The most important one. You got to keep his stun down. Okay. Um, Ray cool down with the pocket watch. I ditched UT three. I went for that extra seven and a half percent boss dam. If you have a low dragon drawing, do not use this. Use this. Even if it's one star or zero star, that additional cooldown is critical okay um obviously you want to put the perk on the s3 that applies a skill to six of your allies so 75 percent of your team is actually getting that cooldown and just to emphasize the cooldown it's four seconds four seconds that they're cool that she's cooling her cooling them down plus an additional in my case 1.7 so I'm getting a total cooldown reduction of 5.7 seconds every time she fires her S3. Then I've got a pocket watch on there. That pocket watch is giving her an additional 1.4 second cooldown every 10. It's a 25 second cooldown on this skill base. So I will get an additional four seconds worth of cooldown from only a two star pocket watch which I know a lot of you have, okay? I'm on like an 84% fail bonus on this thing when it finally does upgrade to three, but even at a two, I'm getting a four second cooldown off of this, making it fire at the worst every 21 seconds, cooling everyone down five and a half, actually a little more than 5.7 seconds. But I gave my Ray high attack. Why did I give her high attack? Adi A2 Soul Weapon right here. Changes the number of targets to three. So I get the effect of his base Soul Weapon on my three highest attack targets. Folks, this is the best Soul Weapon in the game for everything, okay? Hands down. This is the one to invest in, okay? Notice I've only brought it up to A11, and that's just because I needed it to be A10 in order to upgrade it to A2. So I needed it at B tier 10 in order to upgrade it to A2, um, but it is giving an additional cooldown of every skill by one second, every second. And it runs for 15 seconds. So every skill is getting cooled down 15 seconds continuously, even as you're using them. It's not like it goes away. You can keep firing the skill. So spammable, spammable skills are getting cooled down 15 seconds, over 15 seconds, not just 15 seconds all at once, like his U3, okay? Like his S3, where it just cools everything down all at once, right? Where you have to time it right in order to get the full cooldown effect? No. His A2 is just over 15 seconds. Everything's cooling down for your top three attacks. So who do I have getting that benefit? Well, obviously Ray, obviously my DPS, and I went ahead and I decided to give it to Fallen Frey. I don't have a secondary DPS or a sub DPS that it's really worth giving that to. And some of you may say, why not give it to Adi? Why not keep his, youth, his S3 firing more rapidly? Well, guess what? His S3 is not affected by skill cooldown reduction. A lot of people don't know that. That's why I use him in PVP because bonds don't work on Adi. You can't bond Adi. And guess what? If you have this skill on, it removes the negative effects when you fire it. 
So it's doing a team cleanse, giving them full mana when you have this perked, and it's never going to be affected by cooldown. So that's just a side note for why PvP Audi is amazing. Um, but back to his soul weapon. I have no purpose in giving Adi high attack. So I just give him some decent crit, let him do some sub DPS damage, and I make sure his mana attack recovery is high because I always want to have his S3 ready for, boot, for, for bursts when the world bosses go down, okay? Now, Glenn. Glenn is all about her T5 dark perk. Okay, she's giving 8% of her defense to the entire team. Now, some of you may wonder, why would I not run this little guy right here? That's what I used to use, okay? Increasing her defense by 50%. Well, I did some math on it, and right now with her base gears running the way that they are, okay, and everything has defense on it, not full defense. I need her to have some attack speed and some mana recovery, but for the most part, defense, even all her Velks, they're on her unique weapon or bringing defense to the table and most of her unique tickets actually all of her unique tickets have at least one defense line on them so i give her hordes and hordes of defense because i'm gonna get eight percent of that total so let's do the math on that that's twenty-five thousand just off of her base defense she's getting another 10 from this it's not even registered she's getting another 35 percent from this another 25% from this and then of course when she fires off her time for counterattack, she's getting a base 20,000 excuse me 10,000 defense um, this UT right here boosts that an additional 50% I was using this skill which boosts it an additional 100% but I stopped using that because with fallen fray in the mix now I'm no longer getting that additional 300 crit chance from her unique weapon onto my DPS so I have to reduce Protan's crit resistance by 250. This has a nice quick school cooldown with Adi and with Ray in the mix RNG style. So that's firing frequently. And if that doesn't fire, I've got my lab for backup with go away. That's doing another 300 crit damn reduction, crit resistance reduction, okay? So RNG wise, let's just say I'm 95% uptime on 1300 crit and I only lose 300 crit chance when he throws his trident down, right? That's the only time I'm going to lose my 300 crit chance is when he does his tsunami, right? Or I'm sorry, not tsunami. This one right here. Uh, is it tsunami? Which one is it? Oh, sorry. Deadly trident, right? It says here, dispelling all positive effects from enemies within range. You see that big warning on the screen? Yeah. When, anything, when that thing comes down, it removes all your positive effects and reduces your crit chance by 300 for 18 seconds. So that is the, the big reason I need that 1300 crit chance. Now, Pans has got 930. I'm getting a total of 150 from Lav, and that's going to bring her total up to... Uh, nine, uh, excuse me, 1,080, and then I'm just having to close that 220. Well, that 220 comes from Glenn, or that 220 comes from Lav, right? So I don't want to give her more crit damn. I don't want her to be worrying with that. I need that attack where it is. I need her mana recovery where it is, her attack speed where it is. So I'm not trying to give her additional crit damn. I'm going to let them take care of that for me. May, 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 may. UT3. One more ball. You get an additional ball with this ticket. Okay. Now, you can increase its damage uh, to 50%, which might be useful in Mountain. But the only thing I really am running this for is the fact that she's throwing an additional ball. And that ball does big stun. Look at that four seconds four seconds and then if there's there's a 10 percent chance that the stun durations doubled that chance is based off of three attacks i'm increasing the likelihood of that 10 percent chance by throwing an additional ball every time she throws her s3 that's why you're seeing those big massive crit uh CC reductions on his bar, okay? Also, 
you want to do her soul weapon to this right here. A1, 20 stacks. That means that over 120 seconds, you're getting a 4% attack 20 times. And during the activation, there's a chance that you get two stacks at once. So they build up. That's why you see me switch over to manual right at around the 250 mark. Because from that point forward, I can't throw her soul weapon until there's only 120 seconds left. Otherwise, I'm gonna not only lose out on multiple stacks, but I'm gonna also lose out on having those stacks till the end of the battle. If I didn't survive to the end of the battle, it wouldn't matter. But since I do survive, I want all 20 stacks and I want it all battle long, okay? So that's why I do A1 on May. Um, the other thing I mentioned in the video is attack speed. I have her at 1480 right now. Obviously, she's got a unique weapon that's pretty high for an NPC, three stars good. That's gonna give uh, the attack speed boost and death pen boost an additional 35 for five stacks. Why do I say five stacks? I make her take anything indispellable. He doesn't clear it with his trident. So those five stacks are gonna always be up on all. What do those stacks bring? They bring attack speed, they bring mana recovery, they bring death pen. It's completely random what the stacks might be. Like it might be five st stacks of attack speed. It might be five stacks of death pen. It might just be that every time she throws her UT one, her skill one, she's just giving your team 500 mana. But at the end of the day, those things ain't going away and there's always something there and her unique weapon is boosting it by an additional 35. So that's 135 attack speed. You can do the math on that. Five times 135. It's a lot of attack speed. Um, why is attack speed important? Well, this. Each auto attack has a 30% chance of healing the ally with the lowest hit points by 3% of their HP. Also provides 5% mana to the ally. Well, guess who's often the ally with the lowest hit points? It's usually pans. My DPS, your DPS, will often have the lowest hit points. So she's feeding them health, she's feeding them mana, and then right here, I'm giving them additional stun every 12 instead of every 15 with take this, right? Stun. It could be M damage, it could be freeze, but there's some RNG with stun and now it's doing that every 12 seconds. So she's bringing a lot of CC to the table, right? I go ahead and throw her on heal. I go ahead and throw her on quick mana recovery. And I go ahead and throw her on her additional attack and defense, all that bullshit. Um, that's my May build, okay? Audi. Uh, sorry, I already went over Audi. Here we go. Nikki. Nikki is on DPS gears right here. She's increasing her damage to the boss. I don't have anything that does additional amping. I don't know if her other unique ticket does amping on PDAM, but I know her unique weapon does. 42% at four star, 50 at five, okay? So she's doing 50% amplification as a five star every five, set four or five seconds every time she uses a skill. And she's using skills frequently because of all that cooldown. So she's also doing big damage here. You saw her DPS was soaring for a sub. Um, she's also reducing his P block to zero, which is huge. So he's not taking any reduced damage whatsoever. Um, and uh, she's giving out an additional 30% damage with her Merciless Gale, right? If the target is not a hero, causes it to take 30% increased P dam for five seconds. That's 80% potential P dam amplification just from her unique weapon and a merciless gale. But guess what? There's more. There's more. Her soul weapon. This is why I want to get it to A2. Grudge of Heart Non. Increasing P damage the target takes by 2% and reducing its attack by 2% for 10 seconds. But guess what? If it's a boss, it's 20 stacks of that. That's 40% additional P dam. So now we're up to 120 P dam amplification from Nikki 
on a five star unique weapon and just an A0 soul weapon. Check this out. 15 stacks, 60% PDAM amplification, my friends. 60% attack reduction. That's your win condition. 60% attack reduction, 60% PDAM increase. We're at a whopping 140% PDAM amplification from one hero. And she's doing a massive amount of CC but it's a slow burn, it's a slow burn of CC. So it's not as good as it would be on somebody like Manticore, where a CC bar is able to recover. Um, this bar obviously just goes down and doesn't recover at all uh, with the team that I've got, but it is still bringing it down. Seven times stunning every one and a half seconds, okay? So I'm getting a big stun right there from her S2. And then her execution is more just for damage um it's not really anything worth calling home about um i do amp its damage a bit because she never falls into uh massacre instinct and uh i could put her on this right here where she's taking a little bit reduced damage but this is gonna give more damage out overall as a dps so that's my nikki build i'm gonna take a look at her unique uh, treasures. There might be a unique treasure that does even more amplification on PDAM. And if so, I need to get that thing and that would be bonkers. That would be bonkers. Um, Lab is just on pure crit gears. Um, 632% plus her base crit here. Um, and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it with Lav. Have her give the crit chance out. Have her on mana recovery so that her bear up's a little more consistent. And um, as she gets hit, obviously, she's increasing attack. I throw on a feather because her unique weapon gives her uh, dodge every two and a half seconds when she uses, for two and a half seconds every time she uses a skill. So that 75% crit dam, though, is the main thing. And then, of course, when I fire off bear up, I'm getting 50% additional. So now I'm at 125 plus 15% of about 700% by the time you take in the 30% that I'm getting from Audi and the 20% uh, that she's getting from here, another 50% bringing her to the 682. And then of course, uh, we're getting crit dam from Glenwis as well. So she's at about 700 crit dam. She's giving 15% of that total uh, to, uh, to my DPS, right? To uh, pants. So it's a lot. It's a lot of it's a lot of crit dam, right? Fifteen percent of seven hundred percent is a big number. So uh, that is the team. Frey is pure attack. Keep all her stuff on cooldown. Blessing of Doom, giving that attack speed, that CC immunity. Um, I have her on this. This is all I need. I don't need to go four star with this. Um, so the only thing that is affected when you uh, upgrade this is the duration of the of the shield. Um, with the teams I run, with the cooldown from Ray, the cooldown from Adi, that's that's a hundred percent uptime unless it gets dispelled. Um, so 17 second cooldown. She's getting the RNG cooldown from everybody else. So plus she's getting Adi's A2. Uh, even if you don't have an Adi and you have a Ray, no sense in going above three star on this one here unless you need the hit points. So um, lots of attack uh, is going to make that shield stronger. Um, she's got three DPS moves. She's incredible in Xanadu's too, by the way. The main thing I also want to point out is her uh, modest P dam amplification and M dam amplification. So um, it's 20%. It's not a lot. But guess what? It's something. Um, she's also giving out an additional attack speed that's in, uh, irremovable and 7% of her attack to my DPS. So uh, she's going to, with this Blessing of Earth, have around a million attack um, with these perks on and everything like that. And uh, on top of that, she's healing allies regularly by 360% of her attack. She's also increasing... Death Pen 
by 500 for seven seconds. So um, Frey is just a incredible, incredible specimen in World Boss. That's the team. Very informative. Hopefully that helps you. I will uh, go and take a look. Actually, I'll just do it now while we're on the video. I'll answer the question for you while we're here. Um, let's take a look at Nikki's unique treasures and see if uh, that's Scarlet. Nikki, right here. Cruel Madness becomes irremovable. Upon activation, reduces cooldown of all skills by 30% immediately. Actually, that's really strong. Wow. Not for this. That's strong for uh, PvP. Wow. Huh. I don't know. I like her kinky boots. The boots of the stockade. Because you're reducing their PDF and you're reducing their heal rate. And, uh... I mean, it's a good UT. I can get a couple other lines on there, but... Her amp is still nuts. I mean, 160%. I'd challenge you to find another hero that's bringing that kind of an amp to any team. Um, Pris, eat your heart out. 